Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Woolly Mike. But together we are Modeling, Modeling for Advantage. Back again. Back again. Uh, good to see you again, Woolly Mike. So today we are going to be looking at Deutsche Afrika Corps. Look at that. A big box. So do you want to read them what's in this while I uh, get this bad boy open for your yep. viewing pleasure and enjoyment? We have seven Panzer Freys, four Panzer Fours, three five centimeter anti-tank guns, two 8.8 centimeter anti-aircraft guns, four 10.5 centimeter howitzers, one complete rule book, German start here booklet, decal sheets and 10 unit cards. Very nice. German here booklet. Did you hear that? Yeah. All right. Um, so this one, this box isn't as deep or as heavy as the others, but the unit count is still strong, right? Seven Panzers, 11 Panzers and six. Nine guns? Nine guns. Nine, yeah. 11, 20 units. Yeah. But um, the, these are mid-war vehicles and early war vehicles are a little bit smaller in a lot of cases. Um, and certainly in terms of points. I mean, if you make, depending on how you build the Panzer Fours and Threes, you, there's a lot of points in this box, that's for sure. Right, we'll sort these piles out and we'll be right back. Right, we'll just talk briefly about the paper stuff and then we'll get onto the sprues, which we know that's what they're here for, right? You yep. get one of these. It's like a start here. Brochure. I'm really glad they include these. They include uh, they include instructions for how to assemble the models. And the great thing about most of the models in here, they're really easy. Yeah, they're really easy kits. Yeah, definitely. And um, there is some um, complexity around the Panzer III in particular. We'll talk about that a bit more when we get there. I think. Um, but yeah, the Panzer III, the Panzer IV, and, and your three different gun types as a modeling challenge. There's not a lot going on here. And also note for anyone that doesn't, that, that didn't already know, is the color of the uniforms on here. You watch a lot of movies and footage of other people's paintings showing German, you get German guys in beige and sand colored uniforms. There were a lot of German guys in beige and sand colored uniforms, but they didn't come like that from the depot. That's bleached in the sun. They're in a tropical green uniform. And really interestingly, a lot of people don't know this, Army Group South were issued with that uniform because they're going to be on the Black Sea. Yeah. They were in the summer of 1941, they were issued with a tropical uniform in Army Group South, which is interesting. Depending on how you base your models, you might be able to do uh, a little bit of chicanery there. But that's that. Uh, you get your unit cards, more on that later. You get your Flames of War mini rulebook. How many of these have you got now, Mike? You're using them to prop up the <laughs> keep wedge doors open and yep. stuff. And they're two, uh, two um, fresh looking decal sheets. The red one, uh, the mostly these are for 15th Panzer. From memory, 15th Panzer is the first Panzer division in North Africa. This is going to do you for the whole period. This one, I haven't seen this decal sheet before, is for 10th Panzer. I have a feeling that that is a late 1942 reinforcement. It might even be what, like, there was a light division there, might have been upgraded to a panzer division. There's definitely 15th is there for most of the period. 21st, which we've not got here, is there in the middle and late period, um, is destroyed and reformed in France. As a 10th panzer, I don't know. I, I do apologise for that. I'm not a North Africa specialist on not the Germans. Not a North so. Africa. I'm, I'm just a dude who reads books and plays war games, mate. <laughs> um, but certainly 15th. If you, if you haven't already got 15th panzer, it's a solid choice. Um, and the iconic red uh, doofus. So this uh, army then talking about the unit cards. I always forget to get one of these out when we're playing, but they're quite they're quite handy these little force composition yep. cards. So this giving you higher level organization, what kind of formation am I taking? Um, gives you all of the support options that are available. But it also reminds you of the movement orders, which we do not use <laughs> enough in our games. Yep. We really don't, we need to, we need to fix that. Um, so that, and then you've got the unit cards themselves for the models that are in here. So this particular formation, the box, it says DAC Panzer Company, but it's actually giving you the stats for the Panzer III 
armored company. Yeah. And certainly in terms of the model composition, you got seven Panzer threes for Panzer fours. So, um, should we have a look at the Panzer three, mate? Yep. So Panzer three is quite an early sprue for them, 2016. So they really kind of, the scale on which they've been doing these has been ratcheting up over time. They're making quite a lot of them now. Panzer three sprue, and you can tell from the sort of signature early features, these really, they're quite thick sprue gates that you've got in here. Now, fortunately, there aren't many particularly fragile pieces on here, so it's not a problem. So your top line formation is going to consist of one or two Panzer threes for five, Five and ten, if they're the basic Panzer three with a short five centimeter, or eight and sixteen. And this is a bit of a signature of this force: is the tanks are quite expensive compared to their capability. Um, and when you compare that to a lot of the Allied stuff, a lot of the Allied training levels are quite low because of their actual combat performance in North Africa for a lot of the period. Pre Montgomery is pretty dire. There are highlights, but there are a lot of lowlights as well. Um, whereas the, the German tanks, they've got good, solid crews. So you've got veteran crew, and although you're only confident for motivation, you've got last stand of 3 plus and, re and remount of 3 plus. The other rules that matter under motivation is you've got a 3, hit on 4s. A lot of the Allied stuff is hit on 3s. You know, so you pay for these. So you've got 5 front armour, and it's got an anti-tank rating of nine as a base with the 7.5 centimeter or even eight with the short five centimeter. That's the range eight and nine. So you're gonna have to take two other Panzer companies, um, which can be different variants of Panzer threes. Um, you can take a Panzer two company, but we don't have any platoon in here. And you can switch out for a Panzer four company. So I can tell you about this force we've got here is you can make a legal formation, which you can't always, um, of Panzer threes and fours, and it'll be quite homogenous for it. Panzer three, then, Mike, what do you got? Yeah, uh, built from 1949 to 1943, 5,774 of these built, not including the Stug variants. Mm. Five man crew. The A to G's had the 37 mil guns, and it was the F to J's had the short 50 millimeter, and the J to M's had the longer barrel 50 millimeters. The 37 mil is on variants all the way up to J. A to G. Really? Yeah. I didn't. I didn't think that that was the case. Yeah. I know that this vehicle. This is my data. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. I know yeah. that it. Um, the the five centimeter cannon didn't come into production as early as they wanted. They yeah. was intended to put the five centimeter cannon in. They just didn't have them. Yeah, the turret wing was actually built for the larger turret. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. So in that, and, and some of you are gonna, you probably you, some of you know all this already. Um, but the Germans going into the war with with two sort of medium tank designs. A lot of games will classify Panzer three as a light tank. It isn't a light tank. It's a medium tank, certainly um, of of its period. But it it is perhaps a little bit smaller and a little bit light. By the mid-war, it definitely is no longer able to compete. Comes in with that 37mm cannon. It gets up gone to the short 5cm, which isn't a particularly short 5cm, but we call it that because they then get a longer 5cm gun. And this is really not North Africa. This is in Russia. When they go in Barbarossa in 1941, they start meeting things um, the T-34 in particular, but also KV, and this short 5 centimeter cannon cannot penetrate it, even at really close ranges. Um, so they upgun it, and it just can't take a cannon better than the 7.5, than the, than the short 7.5. Because the, the original design for the Panzer IV, which we'll come to have a look at, starts the war with a short, stubby 7.5 centimeter howitzer, but it's got a bigger turret ring. So although the Panzer III was intended to be the gun tank and Panzer IV was the support tank within the same formations, the roles get reversed as guns get bigger, armor gets thicker, the Panzer IV turns out to be the design. In 1943, the M or the N version of this- The has a was a 75 mil. It's got short 75, Yeah. but quickly production gets shifted over to Stug because hmm. it's built with the same hull. So they don't actually build all that many uh, of those, but they build a few. So that's the Panzer III. And you're going to see then, as we look at these other cards, there's a lot. Um, while we're talking, we've got some, I've got some models. I'll show you some pictures um, of those. The Panzer III tank platoon is, this is, as for a rookie, I would not advise 
this army because you need to remember a lot of things and you need to know a lot about what you're building before you build it if you want the model to look like what you're claiming its stats are because basically you're free to mix as much as you want from the following options you can replace the short gun with the long gun for two points a model you can up armor it for one point which gives it goes from five to six on the front armor and you can switch out a 7.5 centimeter the switch to the 7.5 centimeter for another three points now so you could have short and long and up armored and not up armored mixed in <laughs> mm. now once you've actually got a grasp of what these different vehicles are i find this quite difficult if it said panzer four panzer three j i know what it meant yeah, whether it's up armored and whether it's up gunned and so forth. Um, but you can, uh, the, the point to think about this is they come in platoons of three, four, five, the basic five points. But as soon as you start up gunning and up armoring them, and you're going to have quite a few of these, you quickly spend a great many points. So when you're building them, it comes back to this. It's worth knowing which version you want to build. Depending on how much of a rivet head you are, or a rivet counter, the Panzer III you'll see is probably one of the more complicated ones. And there's, t there's two main aspects, three main aspects that change. One is the actual gun, and you've got three guns on here. The long gun, the, the short 50, and then the short 7.5. Those are your three three cannons there. So the 37 mils not on here. Um, but I don't think any of those were shipped to Africa and the numbers are quite small. So that's the first thing that you need to bear in mind and that's going to change which mantle that you use down here. But then you're going to decide if it's armoured, up armoured or not. And essentially on this kit, the up armouring changes. It's the, it's the plate of armour in front of the driver's vision ports. Across the front here, you attach that piece. It's quite a clever bit of design. You're sliding it in rather than gluing it on top. And you're going to have quite a different one. And what's the easiest way to spot the difference is probably that the, um, the machine gun is on the opposite side. But, but it isn't. No, it isn't. I'm getting that wrong. That's just the pieces upside down in the mould. The upside down one, I, th I think it's probably simpler for me to say, just look at the diagram. Um, and then the engine deck, if you haven't noticed it, this engine deck at the back, it's actually double-sided. And the different versions have um, the access points for the engine in a different arrangement, if you've not seen that before. So I'm telling you all of this because when you come to build them, if you want to build, I'd start making a number of the short five centimeters. From experience of playing the force, you really can't afford to be putting all your points into Panzer fours and up gunned ones. You're just not going to have enough models. So I'd, I'd start with a de with a decent few of them, um, and and then make a few variants from that. It would be would be my thinking because you're always going to need those vanilla ones because this is a tank for this is a mid war tank that does not continue into the late war. So you're not going to get a cheap version of this in the late war, which might suddenly change its usefulness. The old versions of this tank are quite expensive. So get the, get some of the basic one under your belt. Um, yeah, was an interesting one, the Panzer III, how it illustrates changing German approaches to tank manufacture. You know, this is the tank they think is going to be their principal tank before the war. And it turns out not, but it becomes a Stug. Yeah, which as they have got production problems, they make loads of those as well. So it, it never ceases to be useful. Yeah, built a few of these. Um, it's a good kit. You can have the cupola open or closed. Mm. The only bit I always found fiddly with these is the storage bin on the back of the turret. It comes in a separate piece. Yes. Is yes, I can't remember. It's not. It's not particularly. There is a little bit of keying on the back of the turret. I think in this in this version, they all have the stowage bin. I think it's only the really early yeah. versions that don't. So you do want to put that on. Yes. Yeah? But that's your only tip from memory. Yeah. 
everything else goes to perfect quite nicely. Mm -hmm. All right. So, <clears throat> so those are your Desert Variants pa uh, Panzer threes and your Panzer three mixed platoon. Which, as I say, you can mix and match them a lot. And because of the mistaken target rule, you probably do want to mix in at least one of the longer gun versions. But, you know, your mileage is going to vary on that, but uh, there is some value in, in, in mixing them. It can just be a bit hard on the old noggin, I think, sometimes. Panzer IV. So the Panzer IV uh, we've got here is the early version. They make two different Panzer IV kits. This is the early one. The later one is very, very similar kit, but it's just got a zimmer it on some of the facings. Um, whereas this one doesn't, that, that anti-magnetic paste. Have you made some of these, Mike? I have got several of these, yes. And what do you, what do you think? Again, the the turret bin on the back is a, an extension of it, um, but still fits together nicely. Mm. Yeah, um, eight and a half thousand of these were made in the during the Second World War. Yeah, and so the, much. So this gives you your 1941-1942 version i mean i suppose i'm not quite sure what like the a's and the b's look like because they make very they ratchet up the production so the numbers of the very early series are quite poor so what you've got here though mainly is uh, is the kind of e to f to f2 versions so before you've had the side skirts and the, all that spaced armor uh, which they have so the earlier versions have got the short barreled 75 millimeter gun uh, which is the same gun that you've seen on the um, which we mentioned in the Panzer III, but this is the gun that it goes to war with. And you see that little D-shaped bracket around it? That's sort of underneath the gun? Can you yeah. see what I'm talking about there? That's actually so that the, the aerial doesn't get trapped in the turret mechanism. Yeah. That's quite, quite a clever, clever little thing. As it turns around, it just pushes the aerial out of the way. Um, but what I don't understand is why you don't see that, that on later ones. Because obviously it made a difference. They thought it was useful. Maybe the position of aerials moves, um, but it's something you only see on this. So um, as cool an idea it was. I don't know how necessary it was, but that's what that does. If you've ever wondered for a long time, I wonder what the heck that was for. Um, so that's the new early one. And then you've got these two um, 75 mil guns. Now, these are two different guns. And if you super interested in this kind of stuff the single baffle one is a slightly earlier version and it's going to be something like one is l40 and l42 or some it's something of that nature and you're going to find it around those because another era that it's that it's trying to cover now in game those two different guns have they have no in-game difference but i think that the the double baffle one is is a slightly later gun and it's a slightly different version. Um, and if those things matter to you, I think it's really nice that they've included it. Yep. But the, the combat system that it operates just doesn't have the level of granularity to distinguish between those two different guns. Yep. But they understand that they exist and so they've provided a kit for them. Um, so what you're getting, if you take this, the standard version of this, you're paying effectively six points a model, 12, 18, 24 for two, four, five. And you can pay an extra four points to up on it. So you're looking at 10 points per vehicle if you want the long 75. And that is a lot of points. 10 points for a tank. I mean, it's got all the stats that you would expect it, and it's got five front armor. But that um, that long 7.5 centimeter with two and one shots, 32 centimeter inches of range. But it's got anti tank power 10 and fire up three, uh, um, fire power three. And for a mid war tank, that's a beast. That really is a beast. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you know about the Panzer Farm, Mike? As I say, um, general production, crew of five, 25 tons, 25 mile per hour on a road. Pretty much a standard tank, reasonable size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, uh, you know, still in yeah. service in 1945. I think some of them are in service after the war yeah. in other minor nations. Um, the three, uh, the, the other, the, the, one of the great innovations, they talk about 
when you hear about like the performance of German tanks at the beginning of the war and that, that Blitzkrieg era, and then you look at the stats on these tanks, the, the speed, the firepower, and the armor, they look very, very good. I'll tell you one thing that you'll find in every German tank that you won't find in most other people's tanks until later is three man turrets. Is that the people in this vehicle have got a job to do and they've got one job to do well. Yeah. The commander is there to command. He's not also the loader and also the gunner and also the gear stick man or whatever. It's like, yeah. I am here to keep these other four guys working. So that five man crew is a gunner, a loader, a driver, a machine gunner and a commander yeah. who's there to command. Most of the nations have got two or even one man turrets, yeah. you know, the, um, and the the ergonomics in this turret are very hard. I'm not, I'm not that much of a rivet counter. I can't. I haven't been in the turrets of dozens of tanks, but I can I can tell you what other people have said about them. And the turret is very well designed with the commander in the centre, where he can see all four crewmen. Yeah, which again is not is not common to other tanks in that early war, and it gives them a real tactical edge i think that ability that um that freedom to operate and to time to think because you're not also doing other jobs yeah the three-man turret game changer in tanks and still essentially what we're doing today right three-man turret and a yeah. driver 10.5 centimeter howitzer the 10.5 centimeter um now I forget what this is actually called it's called the look FK or something like that. I, the, the name of the gun. Um, this is yeah, the ten point five centimeter yeah. howitzer. These are these are really nice, um, flexible pieces of artillery. You find a lot of these in the German army, um, and it's it's interesting how this is this is the kind of lightest field gun or lightest howitzer. What you've had happen between the first and the second world war is guns have got bigger. Um, I think a lot of it is to do with alloys rather than just raw iron and 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 then in then into steel you've got different types of steel and you've got different alloys and they it's we call it steel but it isn't just steel yeah. and it isn't entirely made out of steel there are other bits that they can make out of other materials and what it means is they can make bigger guns but these are still largely pulled by teams of horses yeah, you know, in all the propaganda footage you see in documentaries, yeah, of course there's a there's a um, there's a tractor pulling, you know, a half track with nice lovely benches for the eleven crew or whatever. But the truth of the matter is, this thing is largely pulled by horses, and to that end, it gives you both wheel types. So I forget which way around it is. I think it's this one that looks more like a classically spoked wheel. The two different types of wheels on here. Is only in the mechanized forces have you got pneumatic tires where it's actually being pulled by a tractor, a, yeah. like a half track mover. You do have the two guns on here. The performance of these guns are not different, it's just if you're building it early war or late war. I mean, again, there will be a difference, but that granularity is not going to be reflected in there. But if that difference is important to you, you have that option. If you want to be authentic, you probably want to be building the earlier one for this particular set. And if you're building a later war one, use the other one. I imagine it tells you to do that in here, actually. Yeah. Now I come to think about it. So just looking at the figures, the earlier version, there was 11,800 built. Mm. And of the later 1814 variant, 10,200. And it's reported that the Swedish army still had them as late as 1982. Well, there you go. There you go. Um, I don't think we gave up the seventeen, uh, the yeah. twenty-five pounder until the eighties. Yeah. In you know, like in the territorials, we're still kicking around. Um, so yeah, this has got all the performance of a large gun as you as you would expect. It's basically got the same stat line as any hundred mil gun uh, you're ever going to find in the yeah. game. Uh, but it being German, it's got uh, there's good stats. You know, it's got confident motivation with the third right last standard three plus. It's helping for it's careful. It is worth remembering and and. Uh, I hadn't realized this before, and I'm starting to. These bigger base artillery, these are on the on, on the on the big the 60 by 90 or whatever they are, they usually got weakest armor infantry saves. These have got four up save, yeah, not a three up save. That's quite a difference to a dice roll that you can't really modify as well. Yeah. 
Um, but I like these because they have um, a firepower of three up and even as artillery in barrage mode, they've got an anti-tank rating of three and that means you can knock out you can actually yeah. knock out armoured vehicles and you've got a chance of bailing them. Now, the odds are not good, but you can also fire it in direct fire, at which point it's got an anti-tank rating of 9 and a firepower of 2 up. 9 is going to go through a lot of mid-war yeah. vehicles, or at least have a chance. But you are going to pay for it 7 or 14 points, depending on how many you take. Next piece of artillery, we're going to go for our three 5 centimetre guns. So, the three 5cm guns, like the 10.5cm, these are coming in as a support option here. Um, you got for 8 or 12 points. And you see this is this theme with this German DAC army, everything is expensive. Okay. You know, if you're, if you're used to playing a kind of late war or, or, or even early war Russian army where you can get a battery of guns for 3 points and stuff, this German army is really going to be light on units. Um, it's got all the German stats. It's got the three up infantry save because it's on a smaller base. Um, and the five centimeter gun, it's got anti tank power of nine and a four up five power rating. So it's a solid gun to be taking. 12 points for three of them. It probably costs more than the tanks it's shooting at. Um, it's as simple as beautiful little kit, right? Yeah. This is the world's. The world's smallest kit. I mean, what you're talking four pieces here. Two wheels, gun shield, two wheels, gun shield, gun carriage, gun. Five pieces. Mm, oh, is that a trailer? Or another? Uh, like, There's a bit to go under the gun shield. Yeah. Six, but six pieces, literally. Um, these a little bit different to just take a moment, if that's right. Have you built one of these, mate? Have you seen these? Um... I think I have got these ones, yes. I, I think I built these. I, that's the howitzers I've not got. Right. So, so these come with the five hall bases. They're the same size as the infantry base, but they're intended to mount long ways with the gun pointing out this way. And this is the kind of medium, the way they do medium artillery. Now you've got five holes here, but you're not necessarily going to get five guys on. But the reason they're giving you the five-hole base is it gives you a little bit more wiggle room in terms of putting the gun on and then seeing where you can fit the crew Yeah. to try and... I have seen people get four crew figures on these. I, I, I haven't got... I haven't managed that. Um, and certainly if you like to have your guns separate, you need to think ca very carefully about where you place them. But the five-hole bases in here, are, they're really nice for that that flexibility to move them around. And I really like Flames of War for the way that their multi-hull bases, they're not identically punched. Yeah. They're mixed up. It just gives you a bit more of an open order kind of feel. But yeah, these ones in particular, I would plan where you put your... When I do mine, I basically dry fit. I stick my crew on and then work out if the gun fits. Sometimes I'm still stupid because I paint the gun separate and I actually... <clears throat> have them separate, and then I put a toft in, which means I can't no longer fit the gun in place. Yeah. And that's all that trouble to leave the space, and then stuck a bleeding toft in the way. <laughs> but you're smarter than me, learn from my mistakes. So that's the five centimeter gun, which is strictly an anti-tank gun. Yeah. Well, Mike, the Flak 88. What a beast. What is the Flak 88? Got all the same German stats, confident, but with the last uh, four plus, but with the yep. last hand rule. Veteran, careful, hit on fours. It's got a four up save, like the other large base artillery. You get a pair of them in here, is that right? Two of those, yes. So this is the Flak 36. This weapon terrified, I like tankers, and there's a reason for that. In game, it's got a 40 inch range, uh, and a stick, halting rate of fire of two, movement rate of fire of one, like any other gun. And it's about tank power of 14. In a period when tanks have got front armor of four or five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get to add a dice to that, but you still don't get anywhere near 14. Um, so the kit then, Mike, uh, I've built some of these, uh, but a while back now, and you've built yep. some. Any 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 tips? I mean, it's a 28, 2016 kit, yep. like a lot of this desert stuff. When, when, when you build the gun at the rear end, you've got the aiming mechanism is in two parts. Yeah, it's like, it's like a cradle in which the gun sits. And then you sit the breech, sit that over the breech area of the gun, and yep. then make that to the the support stand. And um, I, I just I remember finding it fiddly, and it's not very clear. 
in the diagram. So. Precisely how that goes. I just had a look at the diagram. No, um, I'm, I, I don't remember it being a problem, but then it was a while ago. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, it, it's still, it's a, it's a pretty low parts count kit uh, for what you're getting, um, which is, which is nice. So you kind of cruciform um, plate that you're going to sit on. You do have to add these other legs in, uh, which are, which are over here. You do get a couple of shells. Loose ones, a couple of empty ones, a couple of full ones, and you get a couple of uh, ammo crates uh, yep. to decorate your base with, which is nice. And you do get some crew figures, um, which we're going to talk about uh, in just a moment. But the the 88 millimeter gun, or the 8.8 .8 centimeter, as the Good. Germans would yeah. have caused it, called it. As, as I said, this is a Flak 36, so it's it's quite an old design. It was dual purpose in so far from design, insofar as it had range finding equipment. You know, like yeah. a lot of anti aircraft guns, you can't fire them at that angle. They're not designed, the carriage doesn't point that way. Yeah. And even if you could, the way that the range finding equipment works and so forth. But this was, but that doesn't really explain, they weren't expecting it to be as powerful as it was. 32,500 feet altitude and 16,000 yard range. And that's your answer. And something that's intended to shoot near straight up to 32,000 feet yeah. is going at a hell of a lick. Uh, and still going at sufficient energy at that point to do some damage to something if it hits it. And and, and that's why it's such a powerful anti-tank weapon, is it's so high velocity. I mean, if you think about 8.8 .8 centimeter, that's not the biggest direct fire anti-tank gun in World War II, mm. by any means. It's not. That, the, the Americans, you know, there's M10 with a 90 mil. It's not as dangerous as this thing. Why not? So, well, you should look at the amount of powder in this. This thing is very high velocity. Yeah. 2,690 um, feet per second. Relative to other things. And, yeah. and they were finding a lot of the early war tanks. The HE rounds from this would penetrate the tanks. Yeah. You know, they're just going so fast and do terrific damage. I've heard accounts of troops think being missed by an 88 was scary because the crack was very recognizable it was fired but if it missed in the desert it would it would skim on the ground it just gouge a great tear in the earth and then keep going and it made a god awful noise as it did so and it was like yeah yeah you just nearly died just so you know um and it was terrifying yeah but one of the downsides on the battlefield of this is no mobility. Yeah, absolutely. Reflected in game, there's no tactical move option. There's a there's a two inch terrain dash and a four inch cross cross country dash yeah. and crossing on a six. Yeah, you can move it a tiny bit during the game, yeah. um, and and that's reflected in the, in the fact that certainly this version is the early. It's the Luftwaffe one. So you'll have seen them in the movies. It's kind of got a trailer. It's it is a trailer. Yeah, it is its own trailer. It's it's on wheels, but it doesn't fire on those wheels. It isn't intended to. Yeah. It need they they kind of they attach the, the the front and the back cruciform. There's like a a two wheel trolley. Yeah, that goes into the back of it and one at the front of it, and then there's a tow hitch, and then it's pulled away by the big tractor. Yeah, and it, it takes time to set up and put yeah. down. As they go through the as they as they get around it, they, they build different carriage for it and yeah. then when you get the sort of pack 43 which is this gun a completely different carriage yeah. um but this at this point in the war these are the luftwaffe ones um flat they're intended as flat but they've come to realize yeah. particularly in the desert with the british infantry tanks this is about all they've got that can deal with them like um, matilda and valentine these things are quite tough yeah and the the, the five centimeter won't do it so yeah we're a nice thing game um this this particular one has the gun shield rule. We saw an Italian one that didn't. Yeah. Um, so we, with those things, it's worth, in these kind of earlier periods, it's always worth being a little bit mindful that the configuration of the equipment might have been a bit different. But in these ones, they have the gun shield rule. There are six points a model, by the way. You get two of them in here. Um, so you can take them one, two, three, or four in the support platoon. Um, and I like the fact that you can take one because... If you've got six points left over, one of these is not useless. Yeah. Also, this thing isn't good AA in Flames of War. It doesn't get the um, dedicated AA role, 
because the dedicated AA roll isn't the range at which aircraft are at if they're bombing you on the table is not the range in which this gun is designed to operate. This gun is designed to operate strategic bombing. Yeah, 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 certainly medium bombers, but but relatively high altitude. If something is actually bombing you now, you need a rapid fire weapon system with a much shorter yeah. range. So it has self defense AA, which means it can take a shot. But it isn't dedicated AA, which again you might think, oh, I thought I'd take some, I'd take some flat, be really good AA. It's not actually very good as AA. Well, it, it, in, in my research, it's reported as being up to fifteen to twenty rounds per minute. But I, yeah, under test conditions. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I, um, the it, I think all of these were manual traverse and elevating, so the old guys with them. Handles and yeah, yeah, but the so, gears make a yeah. big difference there, though, don't they? Yeah they, yeah, they don't have to be really slow, but just because of yeah. that, but yeah. Um, and it, but in terms of sustaining that kind of rate of fire, um, nobody can sustain that kind of rate of fire, but if you're prepared, you could maybe get yeah. that. But these things have a lot more crew than you ever see depicted in a war games table. The establishment strength for an artillery battalion is 500 odd guys for like yeah. 12 guns. So, what do they all do? So, a lot of them ammunition handling and stuff yeah. like that. It's it's a te, the eighty eight was a ten man crew, right? Um, ten man gun crew. Gun, ten man gun crew. Yeah. Yeah. So so we we'll look at the we we'll look at the gun crew models. Yeah. So this is the the five crew for the eighty eight. So you're going to pop this one on the on the one of the big bases, yeah. and you can recognise the eighty eight crew. So it uh, has you've got a number BM zero eight one. But it stands out because you've got that, that really iconic rangefinder. Range yeah, that, that, that binocular vision. Um, so that's, um, it's a, it's a rangefinder because it's about triangulation. Yeah. That's, so they're trying to get as much distance to, for the two points to measure from, is what that is. Um, yeah. These are, these are nice. These are like a hard plastic, I think. Yeah. You always have to like investigate. When you get bolt action, um, bolt action... When you get Flames of War crew figures, you're like, oh, I wonder what material I'm going to be getting made out of this model yeah. I'm going to be made out of. So these are, um, they're not hard plastic like on sprue. Uh, they're somewhere more like um, the softer plastic that uh, like Airfix 172 yeah. soldiers you might have had as a kid. Or may still collect indeed. But you've got four nice poses here. You, you know, um, and, and then you've got the guy who's sat on on the seat yeah the, um but uh, it, these apart from the actual guy holding a shell you can definitely mix and match these yeah. figures from others and there's a real really nice when you get a starter set that's got three different gun types in it it's like well even if i'm only going to use the 88s i'm going to have it's not that every 88 is going to have the same gun crew yeah, because I can mix up the poses. Um, so that's that one. Now there's another gun crew on here, which is for the howitzers. That's the eighty-two. That's the zero eight two, and they're made of the same material. Yeah. Um, so again, you've got the sort of gun captain with the binoculars. Like, yeah. um, is it is it broadly the same set of guys? No, because the no, it's not. The guy's aiming is actually stood. Mm. You've got, um, it's either a cleaning rod or a pull rod. Yeah. You've got the guy with the hand over his ears and obviously the, the, the loader with the smaller shell. So the guy with his hand over his ears always bothers me. It's like we're either all protecting our ears at the moment or none of us. You know what I mean? If we're firing them, we're all doing that. Yeah. Uh, but you always get that guy. You always get that guy. And, and I always use, often like with a three man mortar crew yeah. or something, you got one, you always got one guy doing this and say, well, why do you get to cover your ears and the other two don't? Um, but that's that. And then the third... The four nailed down for the five centimetres. So these are Sciocast yeah. uh, models. And this is where... Um, these are not going to mix well with the other two gun crew models. They'll look fine in the same army, but they won't look fine on the same base. Yeah. Not because of the material they're made out of, but because of the material they're made out of, they're in a different, they're proportioned differently. They're beefier. They're much beefier. They still, you know, I look at these and I think they look all right, and I look at these and I think that they look all right, 
but I look at them and thinking they don't look the same. Yeah, you definitely yeah. don't want these two models on the same base. Um, so these are intended to be, I think, for the five centimeter. Yeah. This is BM087. As I say, it's in Styrocast. It's going to have a look. The sculpts on these look pretty crisp, but there is a bit of work to do. There is a bit of cleanup work to do. On the on the scale helmet, for sure. Look a bit. Mm. Yeah. A bit of mold yeah. line. There's a bit of a mold line on those. Just looking at, looking across them, um, but they've you know they've got discernible faces. They've got creases in their yeah. uniforms. Um, you can definitely see the webbing, gas mask, and so forth. And um, there's just a little bit of cleanup to do. More so than these ones, I don't know. I'm not seeing. If there is cleanup to do on these, it's very they, very they minimal. Look, they look a lot crisper, yeah. Mm, but the faces are a lot the, they've not held the details so yeah. well for being for being a bit smaller and a bit finer they don't they don't have definite i don't mean they don't have a face but they don't have um as prominent features yeah as as the others you know and that and that's a horses for courses thing you know as, as you look you look at monelson oh that's that you know that i'm not entirely happy with that maybe this yeah. maybe the hands should have better fidelity or whatever and you know, Okay, well, here's one with better, with hands and better fidelity. Oh, no, his hands look massive, you know. It's like, yeah. Well, yeah, because the actual margin, that you're really fine in the restrictions of the material you're making out of. Are you on to the last thing? Right? The last thing is the ubiquitous tank commanders. Tank commanders, bro. The three up out of the, the cupola and then the two were just the head sticking out. Yeah, I, li I, like, I like the, yeah. like, ju just yeah. the head um, sticking out. Out of these. So you got you got five different poses. They're they're really nice sculpts. Is made all of the hu the humans that I've seen them making hard plastic are undeniably my favourite. I'm glad that they made a set of tank commanders. Yeah, it's nice to sometimes some of the team Yankee ones. You've got a different crew figure sculpted on the you know for like Commander Up. Yeah, some of the British ones. If you're listening, Battlefront, do more of that because <laughs> across the range I get loads of different. I, I yeah. love I love these, but if there was another one on here that I could use on the Panzer IV crews and so forth. But when they give you these, they always give you enough for every vehicle operator to ride commander up. Now here it's slightly we, we under. I think. We've got ten, 10 commanders and 11 tanks. We've got 10 commanders and 11 tanks. I only ever have one vehicle yeah. that's riding commander up as a way of marking the commander. If you like them all, you can be upset that you're missing one tank commander. Most of us are drowning in these things. Yeah. We've got, we got absolutely loads of them. So as a value proposition then, Mike, uh, to use that modern business term, it's in line with the other stuff, right? You're getting, you're getting 20 models, yeah. tanks or, or, or bases. As a Flames of War starter army for German Africa Corps, I think it's it's... Well, as I suspected, it's more than you need. Yeah. This is 118 points, and that is assuming you build. Yeah, you build three. So building three of the Panzer Fours as up armored, and one and two of them with the long gun. So you're taking a, a HQ of one, which you definitely want to do, and then two platoons of three. One of which is all the up armored ones, and one of which is some up gun ones, and then uh, an a another platoon of Panzer IVs. But to just get, it's not like they've taken all of the upgrades by any means, and it's at yeah. 118 points. Clearly, what's missing here, there isn't any infantry. When they don't put any infantry at all in an army box, um, it's not ideal. Yeah. Because if you play Flames of War seriously, you want at least one platoon. Ideally, a cheap one to just dig in on one of the objectives, just to give you the freedom to move around. And I think that the reason for that, I said this before, is they kind of they've tried lots of different ways of making their infantry, um, and and they were starting with this uh, thermoplastic or cyocast resin stuff not long before COVID, and. They had a lot of stuff in metal. They had some stuff in plastic. I think they probably thought this was how it was all going to be. 
and then it's kind of not quite panned out mm. that way where they are. I don't think they currently don't make Africa Corps infantry. They have it in metal, and they look like nice sculpts looking at their website. Yeah. I've not been able to buy it for a year. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> uh, so I wasn't surprised to see that it wasn't in here. Um, but stay tuned if you're interested in, in mid-war infantry, because the way that they're doing the Stalingrad and Kursk sets and so forth that are coming up, we are going to see entire infantry forces. So, you know, I, I think in the desert, the, this the, it certainly would have been nice to have seen a platoon of mechanised infantry with this. Yeah. It's not here. It isn't the end of the world. You can still go and get some from, from other parties. But in the next range, the next mid-war coverage, we're going to see a lot more of that. Yeah. What do you think? Value for money, Mike? Would you be happy with it's this? It's good. Um, I'm, I've got some fours and I've got some threes for the mid-war, so there's, yeah. they're not much different. Um, the guns are quite brutal when you have to go up against them, I've found out on many occasions. Right, right. So, so yeah, it's it's a formidable force of guns and then the tanks will manoeuvre around. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you're going to... And you can use those guns as infantry for holding objectives. Certainly the 5 centimetre, they're not a bad alternative. In fact, in many ways, they've, they've got some advantages and some disadvantages. All right, guys, that was our thought on the Deutsche Afrika Corps. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello! If you're enjoying our Flames of War content and considering getting one of the starter sets or starter armies, why don't you think about buying one from our online web store at modelingforadvantage.co.uk? Thank you.